And it was told to Tamar, Behold, your father-in-law is going up to Tim Timnah to shear his sheep. So she removed her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in the gateway of Enium, which is on the road to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah had grown up and she had not been given to him as a wife. Okay, what does that tell you, the first part of that verse about Tamar? Well, not yet. We're, that's the second half of the verse. The first half of the verse says, and it was told Tamar, uh, saying, uh, your father-in-law is going up to Timna to shear a sheep. So she hears that he's coming. Now listen to what it says. So she took off her widow's garments. What does that tell you? She had been faithful. She was wearing widow's garments. How many years? She was faithful. That tells you what type of a person you're dealing with here. And you're going to see this again. And hopefully we'll get down there through that verse today. We may not. But the fact that she's wearing her widow's garments, exactly. She's been, oh, my hair's standing up. Because there are faithful people in the Bible. I'm going to tell you something. We're going to go real quickly to Matthew chapter 1. Oh, my hair's standing up. I just love it. I'm sure. I, I, I don't remember specifically, but I will bet. All right. So we're going to go there. And I'm, I'm going to tell you whether I'm right or not. Matthew chapter 1. All right. I'm pretty sure of what I'm thinking right now. Uh, let's see here. Okay, no, but let me go to Luke chapter 3. Um, I just, I may be wrong, and if not, I'm still going to tell you what I'm thinking about because you will see this er elsewhere. But uh, let me see, Luke chapter 3, let me see. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't. I don't think Luke chapter three is going to do this. I think this is. Um, it doesn't. It, it definitely doesn't. But if you go into Matthew chapter one, and you will see several women named in the genealogy of Judah, you're going to see um, Rahab the harlot. Okay. You're going to see um, uh, Bathsheba, who is the. Um, where is she? Uh, Solomon. By her who had been the wife of Uriah, so it, it says Bathsheba. but doesn't say it specifically, but it was his wife. And I thought that Tamar was mentioned, but she's not. But there are two or three women that are mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. And guess what? None of them are Jews or Hebrews. They're Gentiles. And once again, we have this Gentile person who it says right here is um, uh, Judah begot Perez and Zerah. Oh, by Tamar, there it is, 3-1. I I, I'm sorry, I didn't even see it because usually it's offset. It wasn't. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 3, Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. See that? This lady, because of her righteousness and because of her faithfulness, is listed in the book of Matthew, in the genealogy of Jesus. When other people aren't mentioned that are in there that are mentioned in the Old Testament. But this is the reward for being a faithful person. Right here. Isn't that wonderful? Matthew 1, verse 3. If I said 3, 1, I meant 1, 3, and that means I had a dyslexic moment. Anyway, Matthew 1, verse 3. Do you see it? And there she is mentioned. I knew she would be. I just knew it because this is the way that God deals with people that are faithful. And that widow's garment, every time I read that, I have to think, what? What an honorable lady. You know, here she's wearing these things. And we know it's been a long time because it says Shayla's uh, grown up in the same verse. So here we go. Um, uh, it was uh, 30, uh, do, do, do. She took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself up and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah, for she saw that Shelah was grown up and she was not given to him as wife. So now what she's done seems unrighteous, but it's not. In the case that she is doing, she's putting on prostitute's garbs. She covered her face like a prostitute would. So that is she, but she is doing it for one purpose and for one purpose only. Okay? It's not because she's a prostitute or because she's doing it because she is due a child. Okay? She is due a child, and that's why she's doing this. So, go ahead and keep reading. Is it 17? Uh, uh, where were we? Um, oh, yeah, 15. But before you go on, uh, it, this goes also like to, uh, uh, what is it, um, Zechariah's wife, who, uh, you know, she didn't have a child until her older age. And she said, take away my disgrace. This girl 
in this culture to not have a child was a disgrace. It was just something that they, you know, they'd have as many babies as possible. If they could have 10 or 12, they'd have that many. Because it was, a, uh, it goes to what, Psalm 1, 132 or whatever it says, sons are a heritage from the Lord, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. It's just a blessing in this culture to have children. She didn't have one and so she has reproach, just as Zechariah, the mother of, or the father of John the Baptist, the wife says, well, now the Lord has taken away my reproach. This is something that they wanted in that culture. And what, you know, that's just the way it is. Okay, please, go ahead. 15. When uh, Judah saw her, thought she was a harlot, for she had covered her face. So he turned aside to her by the road and said, Here now, let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said... What will you give me that you may come in to me? He said, Therefore, I will send you over a kid from the flock. She said, Moreover, will you, will you give a pledge until you send it? Okay, she's, she's acting like a real hooker here. What he's doing is he's saying, I will give you a, 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 a kid goat from my flock. And that would be, you know, it'd be pretty good pay. You get a couple meals out of it, or you could get, uh, uh, what do you call it, milk out of it. I, I don't know if that's the kid is the male or female. What you're going to get value out of it if you let it grow up. You can use its skins, and you know, so it's it's not a bad deal for her. But a real hooker is going to do this. She's going to say, you know what? How do I trust you? I've been duped before, and so you give me a pledge until I get my kid goat. Okay, go ahead. I, I, oh, I'm sorry, 3817. I, 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 went back and I, lost it. I do it all the time. As a matter of fact, when Pat was reading earlier, she went on for a while, it was because I had no idea where she was reading from. 3817. You read 17. Okay, 18, please. And he said, what pledge shall I give you? And she said, your seal and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived by him. Okay, so she wasn't any dummy. She said, give me your seal, which is his official. He would press that into clay, and that was his signature. That, 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 that was his authority. And then his staff, you can't make a living as a shepherd or without a staff. And what was the third thing, your staff? Um, your signet cord, oh, your signet and cord, because it was, his signet was on a cord. It would be like carrying around, um, you know, my keychain. You got that thing hanging down there. And so this is... And then he would take that and he'd press in new claim, say this is an official purchase or whatever. And his staff was a symbol of his authority over his flocks, okay? So she's saying, and he is thinking, these have no value at all to her. None. She wants the kid. There's no way, he, who, would, who would keep something that she couldn't actively, she couldn't sell it. It's his. It identified him. It would be like trying to sell somebody's signature. You just can't do it, right? So he's like, oh, okay, no problem. Even though it had great value to him, it had no value to her. But she was not being a dummy. This whole thing shows of a real intelligent girl and somebody that just wanted a child, okay, and did it in a righteous way. Go ahead. When Judas sent the kid by his friend, the Adolamite, to receive the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her, and he asked the men of her place, saying, Where is the temple prostitute who was by the road at Enium? But they said, There has been no temple prostitute here. Can you imagine, you know, I, sometimes I do this, and I don't mean to say something stupid, but sometimes when I read the Bible, you know when you're watching like Mary Tyler Moore and you get canned laughter? Yeah. I get canned laughter when I read these particular verses like this. It's like, ha, <laughs> It's just so funny to think about that. There's no harlot. There, we don't have a harlot in this town. And he's like, what? You know, go ahead. So he returned to Judah and said, I did not find her. And furthermore, the men of the place said, there has been no temple prostitute here. Then Judah said, let her keep them, lest we become a laughingstock. After all, I sent this kid but you did not find her. So if he, he, he held up his part of the bargain, she didn't want it. he's like, well, it doesn't have any value to anybody, but if I make a deal about this, then I'm going to be a laughing stock because I'm going to know that I gave away my cherished possessions 
to a hooker. You saw, the whole thing is just like, he's in a box here. You know, so, okay, go ahead. Now it was about three months later that Judah was informed, your daughter-in-law, Tamar, has played the harlot, and behold, she is also with child by harlotry. Then Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned. Okay, so he's really upset, and at, once again, this is not the Levite law. People will say, well, you know, death, this was a death penalty under the Levites. It doesn't matter. God incorporated what the law was at the time into the law of Moses. So we can't insert this into the law. We can insert the law into this. Anyway, does this kind of give you an inkling of anybody else later in the Bible? Even in a little sense. Mary. He's, he's saying she's guilty of harlotry and Certainly, Joseph would have thought that too. It says Joseph was a righteous man, though, and he didn't want her to put her to shame. Now, I'm not saying that's a good parallel completely, but it does give you a harking of this, is that there's a child being born and somebody is offended by it, and the Lord took care of it in Mary's case, but in this case, Tamar is going to take care of it. Go ahead. It was while she was being brought out that she sent to her father-in-law, saying... I am with child by the man to whom these things belong. And she said, Please examine and see whose signet ring and cords and staff are these. More canned laughter here, buddy. I got to tell you, it is just like, a, it's like the divine comedy. Oh, and my hair's standing up because it's just such a treasure of a story. It's such a treasure because this girl is listed in Jesus' genealogy. Oh, oh it's wonderful. Go ahead. Recognized them and said, She is more righteous than I, inasmuch as I did not give her to my son Sheila. So he acknowledged her righteousness. She is more righteous than I. I am the one that has done wrong. And then the next sentence sums it all up. Go ahead. And he did not have relations with her again. He knew it wasn't right the first time, and he could have, you know, you're now my wife, and I'm, you know, whatever. He didn't do it. He let her have her child, and he left her alone. Uh, what a beautiful story that is, despite all of the bad things at the beginning, and I know the, the explicit uh, terminology they use. What a beautiful story. What a gift from God. Go ahead. And it came about at the time she was giving birth, that behold, there were twins in her womb. Moreover, it took place while she was giving birth. One put out a hand, and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand, saying, this one came out first. Okay, the scarlet thread would have been the same scarlet that I mentioned in the sermon yesterday, of the grub that would fasten itself to the tree, it would die, children would be born out of that, and then they would make the scarlet out of that. And it's, it, what a picture of Jesus Christ. I mean, what an amazing picture of Jesus, that scarlet there. And you're going to see scarlet mentioned, I think it's 49 times in the Old Testament. Rahab's a scarlet, Rahab. Rahab's a scarlet thread. And you're going to, see, yeah, that's right, you're going to see several of them like that. Good, good call. And uh, uh, anyway, so that child puts out its hand and they tie it on there to indicate, because you know when they come out, they haven't wiped them off or anything, they don't know which one is which, so they did that to make sure they identified the firstborn. Okay, this is the firstborn. Go ahead. But it came about, as he drew back his hand, that behold, his brother came out. Then she said, What a breach you have made for yourself. So he, so he was named Perez. And afterward his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and he was named Zara. Zara. Okay, well Perez means to break through. It, it, the story of uh, King David bringing the ark to Jerusalem and they had it on a cart, okay? And uh, the, the cows stumbled and the ark started to fall off the cart and a guy named Uzzah reached out to stop the ark from falling. And it says what he did was disobedient and the Lord killed him. And David called the place Perez Uzzah, the outbreak against Uzzah. So the, this means an outbreak or a breach, okay? And that's why they named him that. Perez is the second born even though he came out first. Once again, divine election. He is the one through whom the genealogy of Jesus comes. Not the firstborn, Perez. Even though he came out first, he was not the firstborn because the scarlet was on the other one. God's hand is 
all over that account, just like it is on every single account. How many did I read in here that one time? I went through and did a whole study on the second replacing the first, and there's like 50 of them in the Bible, and that's just the ones that I found.